In this video we're going to take another look at continuous random variables, uh, but we're going to start to think about the median and the intercourse R range. Obviously we know about the median already from GCSE, like the median is just the middle value. And what that means in terms of this context, if it's in the middle, it's got to be 50% of the way through the data. And we know that the area represents the probabilities, don't we? So if it's halfway through, the area to the left would be 0.5, the area to the right would be 0.5. Let's have a look at an example. Now this one we're given the function, which is defined over two different um, two different functions depending on which x values that we're working with. First part we're asked to sketch, but we should always sketch it anyway. Okay, so the function goes between zero and a half, and then between a half and eleven. Now we've got a quadratic between zero and a half. If I sub zero in, I get zero, so I start at the origin. If I sub a half in, I get a half squared, which is a quarter. So that would give me three over eight times by one over four, which would give me three over 32. So we've got a curve here. But then for the rest of the function, for the rest of the values, it's just telling me it's a constant. So the function is always 3 over 32. So it should look like this. Okay. A useful trick when you're sketching these in the exam is you can use a graphical calculator. So if I enter the first function as 3 over 8 x squared, if I use a comma and a square bracket, which is shift plus, shift minus, commas just here, square bracket to here, I could draw this function between zero, comma, and a half. Okay. And I can also draw the other function, which is just three over 32. comma, square bracket, shift plus, between 0 0.5, comma, and 11. And if I draw this, notice that it only draws the function that you, between the values that you want, um, for the x value that you want. Let's see if Zoom also works well on this. It's not great, is it? Uh, view and window, standard. Terrible. <laughs> okay, let me just manually adjust the viewing window. So, because we want values between 0 and 11, my minimum x value, let's just put in as like minus 1. My maximum x value, let's put in as 12. And the y values, we don't need to go from minus 10 to 10, do we? So, let's go from like minus 1 up to 1. Oops. Hopefully this will be better now. Yeah, it gives me a better idea of what the sketch looks like. I could even zoom in more. I could do the y values between like 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5. But you can see you've got a curve and then you've got a straight line. Okay, so now we're going to start to calculate some probabilities. Remember the probabilities represent the area. Do we need to use integration for this question? You can if you want, okay? But what we're being asked about is to find the probability or show the probability that it's greater than very weird that they've used a mixed number here you don't see that very often in questions but the probability is greater than 8 and 1 to hit it's going to be equal a quarter so really it's just asking you to work out the area of this rectangle isn't it okay so you can integrate if you want between 11 and let's turn that into a, a fraction so 8 and a third what would that be? 25 over 3. You could integrate. And sublimiting, that would work. But maybe like a slightly quicker way of doing it would be to say, well, that base there is 11 minus 
25 over 3. Which is 8 over 3. And the height is 3 over 32. So the area would equal 3 over 32. Times by 8 over 3. Which is a quarter. As we were asked. With it being a show question, I suppose we should show the calculation. You can't you can integrate it. Like integration will show the answer as well. Um, but I would probably just work out the area of the rectangle. We've got to pause for a second, right, and think about what's going on with this question. Like, why are they asking us to do this? Because this is going to be important for what's coming on later in the question. We know that that area there is 0.25. So, 8 and 1 third, if you think about it, it's 75% of the way through the data. 25% is bigger than it, 75% is, is smaller than it. So we need to realise that that number there is your upper quartile. Okay, so we know we get numbers somewhere between 0 and 11 for this distribution. And 8 and a third is 75% of the way through. So this number specifically is our upper quartile. Okay. The next part of the question. Thinking about the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3. So if we think about this. We're looking for this total area here. Now we could do less than or equal to and do one minus that, but I'm actually going to try and avoid that because if you look at if you think about it this way, you'd have to add up these two separate areas, and we'd have to integrate as well because this bit's a curve. So I am always referring to my diagram when I do these, and I'm thinking, well, I want to get this area here. This is the easiest area to work out, isn't it? Okay, so the probability is greater than or equal to three. You're going from three to eleven. So that distance there. Would be eight, and the height is three over thirty-two. So I'd just say eight, eight times three over thirty-two, which would give me three over four. What's the significance of that? Maybe pause for just a second and think about what does that tell us. So we know that this number here, this area to the right, is 0.75. Another way of thinking about that is this area to the left, all of this area, those two bits together, is 0.25. So that means that is our lower quartile. Okay. So last, last part of the question wants the interquartile range. Now the interquartile range is just the difference between the quartiles, isn't it? So there's our lower quartile, there's our upper quartile. So we've got 25 over 3, minus 9 over 3, so that would be 16 over 3. So that tells us, don't forget the interquartile range tells you like how spread out the middle 50% of the data. Like that area in there would be 0.5. Like fifty percent of the data is inside the interquartile range. Okay. Next part wants you to find the median. Now, there's a, there's a, it's actually a shortcut for us to do this. Well, it's not even that much of a shortcut, but I've spotted something, and this only happens just because of the symmetry of the shape. Like, if because we've got a rectangle here, the median would lie like smack bang in the middle like that area there would be 0 0.25 that area there would be 0 0.25 that area there would be 0 0.25 and that area there would also be 0 0.25 so because we've got this symmetrical shape the median would be in the middle of those two so you could just do 25 over 3 plus 3 
and then divide them both by two. Like it's like halfway between those two numbers, isn't it? Okay. But typically, like the the, the way that depending on the question, I'm going to show you like another way of doing it. We could also say, well, if I integrate from the median to the upper, I'm only going to use the upper because it gets messy when you go that way. Like there's two separate functions to work out. So if we go this way, if I integrate from the median to 11, and the function itself is just 3 over 32. The answer would be 0 0.5. Because don't forget the median is in the middle, so we know 50% to the right, 50% to the left. Okay, so if I set this integral up, We'd get 3 over 32, times by 11, <coughs> minus 3 over 32, times by m, and we know the answer is equal to 0 0.5. So I've just multiplied everything by 32 in the equation, and you got 33 minus 3m equals 0 0.5 times 32, so 33 minus 16 equals 3m and that would give us seventeen over three. Obviously it's quicker if you just do this calculation. Okay. And um, that would give us twenty five over three plus nine over three, so that would be thirty four over three divided by two which is 34 over 6, which is the same as 17 over 3, isn't it? So the, the, the message I'm trying to give you guys is, is to do well on these exam style questions. Like, you always have to have one eye on the sketch, because if you just start blindly integrating things without really just taking a second to look at it, you end up doing a lot more work than you need to. And quite often there's like little tricks that we can spot just by thinking about these areas here. Okay. Last part of the question is a bit of a tricky one, to be honest. I don't think this will come up on our paper, um, but I will show it to you just in case. So we get one of these given questions. So it's saying, what's the problem if the x is less than the median? Given that we already know it's greater than or equal to 3. So start with the information that you're given with. Like, we know this bit's already happened. So if we know that x is greater than or equal to 3, we're only looking here, okay? So our denominator is 0 0.75. Like this information that we're given, the total probability of that happening is 0 0.75. So out of this world, out of this 0 0.75, what's the probability of it being less than the median? So within that world that we've got, if we wanted it to be less than the median, it would be that there, wouldn't it? That would be where that happens. When it's less than the median, in the world where it was already more than 3, it's 0 0.25 out of the 0 0.75. And it's it's really visual, this. Like you could just look at that and see it one third of the time. This is the world that we're looking at, and we want it to be less than the median. It's like one third would be the answer for that. Okay, thanks guys.